Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Sunday, October 6, 2024, and here are the readings for today. Today's epistle reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 6 through 15. Brethren, it is the God who said, Let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We are inflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies." For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he who wrote, I believed, and so I spoke, we too believe, and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 through 16. Let us be attentive. At that time Jesus went to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came and touched the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. In today's gospel, we have the story of our Lord raising the son of the widow of Nain. In this story, he beholds this entourage as they go towards the grave for the son of this woman. There is great lamentation. She's a widow, and her son is dead. What does that mean? That means that not only is the husband gone and the son gone, but she herself will probably be not far behind. Because in the time of Christ, they didn't really do well to take care of the widows and if they didn't have their own private form of possession they indeed were in big trouble they would starve or they would be kicked out of their houses or they would be exposed in some way and they would die and so when this woman is joining in this procession for her son it is a double procession mourning the loss of not just the son but also her own life as well this is very humbling and it's sad. It gives us an understanding of the society in that day and that just how little they cared for the orphans and the widows. Very humbling. Hopefully we do not do the same. But our Lord has mercy on them. He takes care of them. He stops the entourage and he heals the boy and gives life back to him. And he is returned to his mother, assuring her of some life that is to come, not a life awaiting death, but rather a life to celebrate the good gifts that God has given her, not just in the restoring of the life of her son, but also in her own. She has hope. She has the potential to survive yet a little while longer. And this indeed is a merciful action on the part of our God. And doesn't this speak volumes of the nature of our Lord? Here we are, in our own rights, wallowing in death and in despair, 
but our Lord has infinite compassion on us. And so he takes us out of that despair. He has compassion on us. And he brings us into a newness of life through his baptism and through his life-giving words and through the participation in the Holy Eucharist. He gives us hope to live with him in eternity in light and in life without fear and without death. And when we look at it that way, when we realize that Jesus himself is master of life and of death, then we enter into an awareness of just who we are in relationship to him. We are his followers. We are his students. We are his disciples. And we are his, his apostles. And when we think of it in those terms, then we understand exactly what it is that we need to do bear the fruits that are worthy of our high calling and go and make disciples of the whole world. To God be glory always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.